Hello, we are finally back after what feels like two year hiatus. Oh yeah, it's been exams. Exams and the it's silly always, thing is we it's we, always exams. We took it separate, didn't we? So yeah. you were off for two weeks, then we were back for a week and then I was off for two weeks with the exams. Um, so how did they go most importantly? Uh, really well. Passed them all. Good. Uh, that's eight of was it twenty six for us? Uh, yeah. Yeah, if you're taking both um UKC and uh, Yasser. And how, how was how was your time in Gloucester? <laughs> <laughs> well questionable <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. Sky is well, you saw Skyborn when you said yeah, it was beautiful. Skyborn, um really nice, really nice people, really friendly. Um, the whole place was uh, well set up and they've got quite a few students and they've got well, they were saying a lot more joining soon on the I don't know whether it was the integrated course or the modular course I know they they do both yeah 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 uh, but they're the based out of uh, Gloucestershire airport and that's a really nice airport say, as well it's a good little setup isn't it like, yeah yeah really when, nice. I, when you go down that the, the, the driveway the road whatever you call it and you've got like it's like a signs it's like there's signs on your left and your right of every single oh yeah there's so many there, yeah. so many companies that are there it's like walking um, down a mo- moving billboard kind of thing oh yeah no 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 there's loads of companies and they all do different things. Uh, I know Babcock is a uh, station there and I only just found Who? out Babcock. It's a, it's a company which, um, deal well amongst other things. They work in fighting fires, you know, aerial firefighting. I recognize the name. This is why I'm a bit confused. Uh, I recognize the name. The only reason but... why I found out is because I was speaking to a, um, helicopter pilot during, while we were doing the ASA exams. And he fly. He's based in Portugal. All right. And uh, it's not bad there. No, no. But he said it's it's crazy. Like um, the company he flies for. So he's getting his commercial pilot's license in, in helicopters to carry on doing that. So I think he already does yeah. it. But I presume he can't sure. earn money off it. I presume it's more of a voluntary, which is probably the way well, he gets around it. Uh, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not the money. I don't know. <laughs> He did say he did say that um, some of the health and safety just goes out the window. Oh yeah, but it didn't completely out the window. But it's like it's like the stuff. It's like the um, when you see them fighting fires in like California or um, Australia, I think maybe like, yeah, you, you, yeah. Know, you know these kind of really of hot countries like there. So when you see the aircraft like kind of zoom, in, they're all cinematic shots, like but don't get me wrong. But you see the aircraft come up over the hillside, and it's just it looks like it's just skimming the treetops. Yeah, but. Uh, it's one of them things you, you've, he, well, you've he literally would literally fight and fire with fire in terms of <laughs> having to fly quite aggressively, I think. Oh yeah, hundred percent. But he said um, some of the stories he was telling me, like they, they say about health and safety, especially with helicopters. The most time that there are accidents is getting caught in wires because you don't see yeah. them, like um, yeah. telephone poles, everything like that. And he says they tell you, right, don't fly low, don't fly under wires or anything. But then when he's actually training properly firefighting um the instructor the captain goes there's some water there and he goes yeah but there's cables there he says i don't care there's yeah. water there. so they have to it's, fly under it it's like um, stuff like that but it's like with kind of uh, like search and rescue pilots or uh, less so police helicopter pilots but those search and rescue pilots who um obviously in the name of it search and rescue yeah but when they go on a mission, is that the right word? And they're kind of like dipping down, hovering in some precarious position, oh. positions. Like when you, yeah, when, yeah. You, when you watch it, when you watch it on the TV, you're like, bloody hell. Like they've got some balls. Well, it's like you were saying, sometimes you just have to get one of the skis that's resting on like the side of a cliff. Yeah. Just one ski of the helicopter and they're getting people off or people on. And that's cool, like, you shouldn't do that apparently because it's, if it's more than like a three degree incline or decline you shouldn't as in try and blades because of um, yeah, yeah yeah in terms of the terrain that you're landing on I, do you know what right helicopter pilots are pretty cool but oh, the right. thing is i don't think they get enough credit because like you don't really see you don't really see There's them very very few yeah you don't yeah. really see them and the mo- mo- most pilots you see are um like your airline pilots or if you like if you live a place around military here. military uh, do you know what you don't see them too i've not really they're rare but yeah when you think of pilots i guess but heli pilots man they've well, got some i don't know if i mentioned this in the previous podcast cojones. um but i said i said to the guy when i was speaking to him 
I've heard this fact regarding helicopter pilots that if you fly, what was it, uh, on average 20 hours a year in a helicopter for 30 years, you've got a 50% chance of death. And he just looked at me and he says, that's about right. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, honestly, it baffles me why you'd even get into a helicopter. He said literally every time you get in, just pray. Just pray. I guess it's an adrenaline rush though, right? <laughs> that's the one thing. So that's the one thing I'm glad. Like, he said I'm glad he's to knackered have after every flight. Just dead. It's like a, it's like a, um, I think it's quite four way, but it's definitely three way control. It is four way because you've got your, your pedals. You've you're got, always on it though. You've got you a side to be on it. Side click. Click. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. And you've got another one. I don't know. What it's and the, uh, but yeah, if yeah. You've, you're always constantly balancing a, it's like a balancing act. I'm just cautious of what my hands are doing here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, he, he did say, so he's been in, um, in situations where he's had to call Mayday. Oh, really? Uh, and Faro Airport. I think it's south of Portugal. Yeah, yeah. He had to call Mayday and he said, he's always stupidly busy there. Everyone's talking constantly. And the moment he called Mayday, just shut down. He said oh it was God. so eerie. You heard nothing. Yeah. Nobody. And he, he, it's all him. But I guess all him. that's but what it's supposed to be, right? He, he had to um, auto rotate. And while he was just auto rotating down, because he lost is complete it, engine power. Yeah, I was going to say, is this where they use the kind of height and momentum of the aircraft to, yeah. to move the. Props. And he, he was just saying, quick, I need, I need to restart this. I need to restart this. And yeah. he's there going, do, 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 do. And just, I mean, it picked back up and he was like, right, okay. And instead of returning, <laughs> instead of returning back to base, however, he carried on. And then maybe 20 minutes after, boom, shuts down again. Jeez. And he's there restarting it. I think at that point he said, right, now I've got, I've got to go back. Yeah. But he, he said he, he's scary. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. you don't but, know how it's going to go but the thing is though I think that's when that's when you perform at your best though maybe not your best but you perform at a very high level because you oh, kind of yeah. you've got no you've got no other chance uh, you, no other opportunity this is the thing with a lot of pilots if something goes wrong they know how to rem remain stupidly calm in those situations yeah because you can't afford to panic no. you can't afford to just not keep level headed because that's when things will go wrong that's when you don't yeah. You don't well, recover from whatever situation. You don't go through your checks and everything. A good, a good example of this is um, I had to get a checkout ride. Checkout ride, checkout flight, which or whatever you want to call it. Um, since the last time we recorded. Um, yeah. And so I went up. Oh, it, it'd only been about a month and a half. So it's not massively long since I last flew, but I kind of rolled up, rolled up to the airfield a little bit like apprehensive like I was. Because... The last checkout ride I did, it was literally just three touch and goes and you're away. Like, they just sign it off and you're sweet. But I think I was speaking to you um, and I was like, um, what did this specific instructor do with you? Because uh, I had this, this this guy, I've flown with him before, but I've never had a checkout ride with him. Yeah. yeah. He went, yeah, he's probably going to like do this, that and the other. And I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> like, uh, um, like a PFL. Pack, yeah, uh, yeah. Practice force landings, Which, stalls. Yeah, it's like in the back of my mind, like, Obviously, I can do them. Like, I didn't yeah. train all this time not to be able to do it. No, no, but no. I've not done one. And this is bad on me. I've not done practice of, uh, like, engine failure scenarios yeah, yeah. since my test. Right? Which... That's a while. <laughs> yeah, it is. But, but also, I've not actually flown that much. Yeah, yeah. I've probably, I think I've flown maybe 20, 30 hours top since my test. So, it, it comes in roundabouts. But, um... I go, I, I go to the I go to the reception desk obviously chat with him and he's like yeah we're gonna do touch and go in my head yeah obviously fine uh, flat plus fine um, and then he goes we'll do a glide approach and at that point I was like right <laughs> I was like brilliant because <laughs> it was quite a, quite a fat crosswind that day as well not massive but like I thought you were gonna say instructor no no no, 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 no. <laughs> Not <laughs> rude, but yeah, it was quite quite a. Um, it's fat with a pH. It's not like a. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but there was quite a substantial crosswind, which, in normal scenarios, don't bother me in the slightest. But like, um, when you've got to think about you, your energy it, management, yeah, glide approaches, yeah, it just. Oh. So honestly, like for the it's ever since, I kind of uh, it's a bit intimidating as well getting into an, the aircraft with an instructor for the first time in eight months yeah, yeah yeah at least um so that was a bit intimidating but then obviously I got up there um and then yeah we 
everything went all right. Flatless is fine. Uh, it's just remember, remembering all your numbers, really. Um, but then they got, we got to the glide approach and um, first attempt, I balls up and away. I was too far out. But to be fair, I think we both underestimated how strong the wind the was. crosswind. Because basically, we just flew a normal downwind. As we we're coming downwind, it conks the engine out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it conks the engine, pulls it in, idles it, basically, not conks it out. But it idles it and then obviously you turn in and stuff. But like, yeah, we both underestimated. So then we went up again. Um, and then obviously as we're coming downwind, all of a sudden radio just goes berserk because there's like an aircraft coming in from overhead. There's an aircraft that's just joining from base. Um, I, mate, honestly, I was, <laughs> he's like, the instructor's just like, just, just hold off for a minute, hold off for a minute. And he spots that one. He spots one of the aircraft. Obviously the other one's behind us. He goes, get some radio, uh, golf, whatever, um, glide approach, pulls it back. Cause I didn't even have time to think like, so I'm yanking it back, doing my trim back to 78, just yanking it, um, yanking the column back right so we can get in. Um, and it was quite funny cause I was, I, I wanted to be t in that situation. I wanted to be too high, if that makes sense, because yeah. you can come down really quickly. Just side slip it. Well, they say it's better to be high and fast than low and slow down. Yeah. 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 So. Um, and yeah, it was it was <laughs> it was quite the uh, the steep approach, but I managed to get it down. And then obviously, started. I mean, the beauty of it, we were landing on um, zero six at Sherburn, which is a grass runway, so it's quite a big runway as well. It's, it's yeah, it's quite long yeah, for relatively yeah for a grass strip, but also because um, it's a grass strip, you just stop in no time. You don't really have to break. Yeah. It just does it for you. So yeah, that was all good. But um, yeah, that energy energy management was. Um, it was quite an interesting uh, challenge for me that day. Yeah. Because I saw, I, saw I, I bring that up because I saw yesterday on Twitter a video of this glider um, doing a loop the loop. But oh, like, I'm have flying you seen upside it? down. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I but saw that. And, the, and the, the caption was something like, is this good energy management or just plain stupidity or something? And he's, he's doing a, this glider doing I, a loop. I couldn't believe when I was watching that, when it was flying yeah. inverted as well. And it's yeah. just like, well, I mean, it makes sense, but you just never, it never crosses your mind that someone in a glider is going to do that. I I think it's impressive. Oh yeah. I mean, I think it's very ballsy. I'm surprised the wings didn't snap off. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, they're proper flip. They look flimsy, don't they? Yeah. Oh yeah. They've got a lot of play in the wings. But it's funny you said about the um, checkout ride, because obviously, depending on the club you're with or the school, you have to do it. If you haven't flown in so many days and you've got less than a hundred hours, at showing it's twenty eight days um, yeah. for less than a hundred. But did you know about the SEP rating and how that works? No, I must say, I must so say I, it all confuses me a little bit. I found out that it's a two-year rating. Yeah. I and mean, then you have to get renewal. Whatever flying you do in the first year does not count for anything. It's in the second year. If you don't have, if you don't do a minimum of 12 hours flying in the second year, um, then you have to do a full test again. Do you know, like your actual... Mm. Um, like a skills test. Skills test, yeah. But if you do uh, 12... I think it's 12 hours and so many landaways at a different airport, uh, then you only have to do just basically an hour with an instructor that year to have it renewed. That's mental. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't realize you have to do at least 12 hours. It just seems a very hours. roundabout way to just qualify someone to fly. Yeah. Well, they said, if you're not going to do anywhere near 12 hours, just hold off. Don't try and rush 12 hours in the last week before it runs out. Yeah. Just do the skills test because it's cheaper anyway, overall. Yeah, true. That's true. Yeah, you have to do everything over again. But technically, if you've had that experience, the it's, thing not, is, it's not as big of a deal as when you first did your skills test. The thing test. is, for people like us, though, it's um, it's one of these things. It's like, uh, here's a question, right? So hopefully we want to qualify for an ATPL. Yeah. Soon. <laughs> do you think you'll do you think you'll still continue to fly private? Private. Um especially being in the first couple of years when you financial you're financially stretched in terms of you've got a fat loan that you've just got you've just you've got to pay back somewhere. Yeah. Well, yeah. most people have to owe owe money to someone. Then you've got say you fly for I think Ryanair do Obviously, they, in quotations, pay for your type rating, but essentially they just take out your first year's pay. 
So then you live enough like 16 grand. I have been told you do not want to pay for your own tie break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a big risk. Yeah, so big again, risk. you'll always, most of the time, you'll have that. But then what Even I'm saying- Even if you pay for your own, either way, you still but, have to pay. But what I'm saying is- Yeah. Do you, you reckon you'll, because don't get me wrong, privately, flying privately is nowhere near as expensive as, as if you were to, to fly twin. You see what I'm saying? It's quite- A twin, yeah, it, it, obviously it depends on the aircraft. But, um, but do you think you would? <sighs> It depends if I'm going like with my mates say, oh, should we go south of France this weekend? Yeah. You know, and, and I'll fly or, you know, stuff like that. If we're going down yeah, yeah. somewhere, then that might be different. But just recreationally, maybe for the first year or so, not as often as I am now. I think it'll be, if, if I think for me, it'll be in a few years down the line when I've got some money behind me, I've yeah. settled down. Yeah. Because like you say, if but you then, get a share in an aircraft, um, and you're able to just fly to south of France, fly to Netherlands. I know, I know somebody yeah. who um, who does that. They own a uh, well. I don't fully know them as of yet. Acquaintance. Yeah, um, they've got a Cirrus. They've got a share in a Cirrus. Yeah, they just take it out. They just go places. They go. Oh, should we go Isle of Man? Yeah, sure. That weekend they'll go. Or oh, south of France, Switzerland. It really Spain. does appeal to me that life, but obviously. It's one of these things, obviously, we've worked so hard. Cool. We've worked so hard to earn enough money to be able to have the opportunity to be a commercial pilot. Yeah. And also, we're going to have to work hard to... It's such a niche Do you know what I'm saying? to get into. I think in the first couple of years, some might have to give. And I think, unfortunately, private flying might be the one. Having said that, neither of us know what situation we'll be in. And maybe... Hopefully, we'd like to, to, to think this especially is going to grow and we might be able to do more in the private community and build it up because at the end of the day, for most, if not all pilots, this is where it starts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if we can get more people into that and more people excited about aviation and in this industry, because they're desperate, you know. Yeah. And in order to you be, for you to become a commercial pilot, you have to get start off as a private pilot. Um, no matter what, even, almost, even if you go down the military RAF route or whichever country you're in, they still start you off with mm. small single engine planes and it's basically classed as private flying. Yeah. It, it, it almost feels like it's um, a rite of passage, almost. Yeah. And I think that it might, might, there's the question there whether, is whether the, like the MPL, you don't do as much flying anymore, do you? It's all sim-based and crew cooperation and all that stuff. So do you reckon there'll be a move yeah. towards less, like, uh, GA flying? Or, and, I and, think... And moving people more quickly onto kind of your bigger jumbo jets? I think it depends on how desperate the airlines are and whether you want to go down that route, whether you want to... No, fast, I'm not... Basically, I, like, fast track into the airlines, which, fair enough... No, I'm not. I'm not saying like right now, but I'm saying do you think in the future that that's a possibility where the CAA or governing bodies turn around and be like, maybe we don't need to put them through forty five hours of flying in a no. Um, you know, think no. I, I tell you, they can do and they are doing, but I tell you this, and and a, there's a lot of pilots out there that'll probably agree in simulators. They are expensive. They are very accurate. Like 40 million for a 737 sim. Really? If, and that's a fixed base, I believe. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Or maybe that's not fixed base. Still a lot of money. Because a they, they bit, put yeah. a lot of technology into it to yeah. try and recreate the scenarios that you face yourself in. But a lot of pilots will agree that the wind and the characteristics of how the aircraft handles in the wind is still not the same. Mm. And you learn a lot of basic flying, which obviously applies to all flying when you do your private license in how to work that. Yeah. It's like, it's like when on approach, when you're landing, most dangerous part of flying is the landing. Yeah. And in small aircraft, you do, you, you get, you learn how to crab or side slip and dip a wing kind of thing in the airlines. You can't dip a wing. Yeah. you'll get a pod strike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you learn these different ways of handling it and everything, but... Is it what they're there for, the little... The pods on the end of the wing? I the pod strike is, is the um, engine. Oh, right, okay, I'm sorry, my bad. 
I thought, I thought you meant the little like buoyancy aid things that are on the back. Oh, end. on some aircraft. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no. I thought that's what you're referring to. I said, what are they? I think the buoyancy aids. Are they? Or has it got the instruments in there? Like you no, know, and it's just buoyancy aid. IRS kind of thing. No, that's that's. That, are that, they situated at the end of the wings though? Like the accelerometers or stuff like that? I don't think not on the big ones. I don't think. Are you thinking of that? Um, <laughs> Either way, mate. We we've done that. We've done yeah. that exam. <laughs> it's on the past. <laughs> no, you. Um, somebody did say, um, you do, you obviously with aviation, you're always learning. Yeah. Always, always doing exams. And when it comes to your type rating, that's when a lot of the stuff you learn for your ATPL exams or CPL exams, you do put it into practice and you do get questioned on it while you're flying. It's, um, it's one of these things. It's, uh, it's always in the back of your mind, yeah. even if you think you've forgotten it. But it's important though. I think you should you should know how I'm it just, works. Do you know what? Forget if we ever use it. I'm quite interested in just to see, coming from an engineering background in terms of degree and all that. Yeah. It's quite cool to, because my degree when I did it, it was more based on the theory side of how an aircraft flies, aerodynamics, drag, lift, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas kind of learning about the instrument side of things um, and, and, and less so the engines, because we did a bit on the engines. Um, but like learning about how the instruments work and how how they've um, evolved as times passed, I think that's so interesting. Like some of the, some of the stuff that they used back in back in the day, yeah. and someone someone's just sat around a table or sat at the dinner table and gone, yeah, I can use I can use the Venturi effect to do this, and you're like, what? And but it works and it's really really accurate as well. I'm yeah. fascinated. But it was funny. I was gonna. I was, I was meant to tell a story. I was gonna tell a story, and I've just remembered it now. I was sat having my hair cut the other day, and um, my barber had downloaded F- F- Flight Stuff, F- Microsoft Flight Simulator, on his Xbox, and he was just sat there. For, he was. He was telling me. I don't think he. I think he just completely forgot that obviously I flew, and he was just telling me about. It. He's like, oh man, I've been. I could really try to find the barber shop, but on. Flight sim. <laughs> and I'm like you've not found it yet and he goes no I went well where can you take off from and he goes oh it's either Leeds Bradford or Manchester and I was like well Leeds Bradford mate Crossland Mall yeah. hey, bro he won't know that oh. he won't know that he's just he's, it'd be, I think he's fine he's I think he's flying like a 737 or what, a 320, right? <laughs> so like, Imagine he's trying, yeah, yeah. trying to turn it around oh, I can't <laughs> see he's not taking off um, so yeah he's he's, um, he's He's flying. I think he's flying one of them from what he was saying. Um, and yeah, so he's taking off from Leeds Bradford and he's like, I just, I just can't find it. I just can't find it. I'm like, well, just fly south, find the M62, then fly west or east. It's a bit of dead reckoning kind of coming in. West, yeah. And you'll find it. And he goes, oh, yeah, I didn't think of that. I mean, well, why do you need to, why do you want to find the barbershop then? I don't think you'll be able to see it. And he goes, oh, because then I'll be able to find my house. And then I'll be able to land in my back garden. I'm like, <laughs> in my head, I'm just chuckling away. I'm just like, hey, if you can land in your back garden. And he's trying this in like a 7-4. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, fair play, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Get yourself a job at easy. Yeah, especially right with all, all them hills around your end. Yeah, Yo, mate. It's oh, yeah. I really I really want to fly to cross them more though, actually. It looks like quite a challenge. Quite a short runway, grass strip, on top of a hill, windy all the time. The only, only place I've been around yours is uh, Keefley. Yeah, and I'm not surprised. You're not surprised you've come out of there alive. <laughs> oh no, no, not in real life. I mean, oh, right. fly Ke- Keithley. Yeah, why have you flown to Keithley? Um, my mum was born there. Oh, even though she's Italian, but I'm sorry, I didn't mean that about Keithley. <laughs> no, it's a shit. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. You know, wait. Is there is there is there an airship in Keithley? No, I just took off from Leeds Bradford. Oh, you just flew over. In Keithley? a serious, yeah. So I've never been. I've never been so far. I wonder what it's like. So you thought you'd, you'd, no. you'd have a look on flights? <laughs> no, but somebody messaged me on Wingley the other um, on Friday yeah. asking me to fly over, over Keefley because over it's for the dad, and the dad lives in uh, Keefley. I mean, that's jokes. I don't message her back. I probably should. Yeah, I would as well. Um, because hey, you've you've been there now. You've done. <laughs> you've done that rodeo before. Can I just say my flying in flight simulator <laughs> is dangerous. Yeah, but, hey, that's what he's there for. Nothing like in real life. Mate, it's like, it's I'm he, like, bloody. Mate, do you know who? Um, uh, what's he called now? I've completely forgot his name. Um, Ronaldo, Sui guy. Yeah. What's he called? Cristiano. No, not not actually. Oh. Well. Um, 
the American streamer. Oh, speed. Yeah, that's it. He, he <laughs> started, that's, I don't know, I can't remember his name. Um, he started flying on his flights, like he's streaming flights him now. Is he? Yeah, and he's doing like loop the loops of the 320 <laughs> or a 747 and like, he's just crashing it into the ground and stuff and I'm just like... Can I just say, I don't know why, it actually gave me chills in my, like, down, you know when you get a shiver? Yeah, yeah. Because I was flying and... For whatever reason, I still don't understand why. Engine cut off, restarted it once. Wait, recently? In, in flight sim. Oh. Again, in flight that? sim, no. I thought you meant like an actual life. I'm like, you oh, no. oh no, I'd be telling you straight away if that happened. No, I mean, um, got it starting again. I was in a jet. I mean, it just cut off completely again. I had plenty of fuel. Would not restart. And... I couldn't do anything apart from watch it just go down into the sea. Couldn't do anything. It's quite depressing. Though. I couldn't even glide it that well. Like the, the controls just pretty much gave up. And I, just, say, I think Alex was saying that, um, seven, was it a seven three? Yeah, he flies seven three. Well, he said, um, he said that they're, they're, they're not really good um, at descending. It was somewhere along those lines. Yeah. He said, there's, yeah. A, there's a saying, I can't remember what it is, but, um, 737s really struggle to descend. Yeah. Which is um, quite incredible. The to, say, to, say it weighs, to say it weighs so so much. Mm. But I guess that's flight character- characteristics. Well, it's funny you should say about engine stopping because I actually had an engine stop. Um, in oh, yeah, my, you did? Um, I did a run-up when I took Wait. my mates out the other day. So I took, I, I took my mates um, kind uh, We went to Sheffield on a night out, I was sober, stone cold sober. <laughs> yeah, just just make sure you uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you mentioned that before going flying. <laughs> <laughs> I was stone cold See, sober. Yeah, if you if you're listening. Yeah, um, I was stone cold sober. I was a little on the tired side, but that's just I'm always on the tired side. Anyway, it's nine it's nine a.m. flight. A little bit cold. It's quite cold. It's not massively cold though, because I've flown when it snows on ground and stuff before back when I was training. Have you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't. I've missed it every time. Have you? Oh, it's so cool. Yeah, um, so yeah we kind of everyone piles in two in the back are, is a bit oh you had a full plane yeah yeah, yeah. oh bloody hell so no, wait, wait three of us all pilots. guys yeah no, I'm saying that because usually oh, men are heavier in oh, yeah, terms yeah, yeah, of yeah. weight no yeah yeah so um, I, 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 was, I was confident there was, there was no worries about yeah weight yeah 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 and as well just short take off and landing technique you know what I mean yeah like uh, performance takeoff yeah Yeah. well this is well I so obviously I fly Pipers Um, my mate is a Cessna pilot down in Cambridge other one is learning to be I say Piper pilot he's flying a PA28 up at he's learning in a PA28 up at Newcastle so three of us are pilots other one's a rocket engineer who's just about to start (laughs) Rolls Royce so (laughs) yeah so um Captive audience, let's say. Yeah. Um, if anything went wrong, you had to write people yeah, yeah, in yeah. review. Well, yeah, exactly. So we're taxiing. And like I say, it's not even that cold. It doesn't feel that cold. And the temperature on the gauge was, it was but, above zero, put it that way. It was probably like five, on six On the ground as well, so that's a bit. Yeah, yeah. So we, we taxi up to the run-up checks. And then, uh, don't get me wrong, I've been kind of... Um, Idle in the engine just so we don't taxi into you quick kind of thing, but st- I don't know. I still taxiing. Do you know what I mean? Engine's still running. We pull up to uh, kind of just before the threshold of the runway to do run-up checks. Swing the plane round, and it all happened so quick. Like I didn't even realize. So because I, I was braking and went to put the parking brake, the engine just completely stopped still. And I was like, I was a bit, I was a bit sketched out by it. In the back of my mind, what? Just as you swung it towards, so it's facing wind. Yeah. But, so as I was doing that to try and look at the wind and like kind of going to get a parking brake and braking, you know, I was kind of preoccupied with that. Yeah. I looked up, engine, just saw the engine, you know, when you stop the engine and, and it just kind of does that little swing and it stops. Yeah. And I was like, I, I saw that and I looked at my mate Alex and went, that's not right. <laughs> so, but in the back of my mind, I knew it was, I, I had the inkling because it was a, just a cold engine, mm. but like it still sketched me out a little bit. So I was checking Everything. Fuel, um, everything. Yeah, I was honestly, and then, <laughs> um, 
so we managed to so i restarted it let it run did the power checks let it and then i just said to him guys are you all right i'm i'm kind of pretty confident yeah, you're it's confident just, you know is it called i was like i'm pretty confident it's just because the engine was cold because there's nothing else wrong like t's and p's were all fine yeah. fuel cock was fine um obviously there's no fuel etc etc there was no fuel pumps no like water that. in the tanks obviously because i checked it all that i couldn't see anyway um, so I was pretty confident myself, but I was, uh, one of them is learning to fly in the back and the other one's the rocket engineer, Michael, who we've flown with before. Yeah, he's flown as well, hasn't he? No. He's not. I thought he said he'd, he's flown. No, he used, to, right, he, used to, he used to fly like Sims and stuff back in the day when we used to mess yeah. around on FSX and stuff, but he's never, he's never flown an actual plane. Yeah. <laughs> but I said to him, I was like, um, guys, genuinely, if you don't want to f- come up and- We'll turn it back around. Yeah, 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 I'm more than happy to do that. And like, no, no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> Look I, was on like, the edge. I was like, you're so lying, but we move. Yeah. That's Alex as well. But nobody wants to be like, uh, no, no, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. turn it back not, around. But the thing is, though, I, if you do want to turn around, just tell me, man. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Zero issues you, that, you should never, you're always. Uh, if in doubt, turn him out. No, that makes no sense. What I've always been told is you're always better off wishing you're being on the ground wishing you were up there than being up there wishing you were down ground, on the ground yeah. it's a good phrase I mean, so it's it, true yeah it's yeah I'll be really fine. true and i've been in that situation yeah so we <laughs> you spat that <laughs> so we uh it's, it's changed from me spilling my coffee all over myself <laughs> um, previous podcast if you haven't seen that go check it out <laughs> yeah i didn't know it was on film or it might have been i can't was remember it not? i can't remember also, it's been it's been three weeks. Sorry, what were you going to say? I was just saying I was going to continue with the story. Oh but, um, yeah, of course. Sorry. So yeah, so we kind of line up. Obviously, do but before we line up, so the story's jagged. Like I'm back and forwards ever. I had one of the instructors, obviously with a student behind. He was doing his run up checks. So I went on radio, and um, I was like golf, whatever, to golf, blah blah message. Or I don't know. I can't remember what I said. And I was just like, oh we're just going to stay here for like a couple of minutes just to let the engine run a little bit longer. We're just having a little bit of uh trouble and I'll make sure it's all right. And then Ben, the instructor just goes in his Irish accent, like, no, we're all right, mate. We can wait for you. I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> I was like, Oh my God. And then I was thinking, mate, if, if, I, if I was a student, I'd be like, yo, I just want to overtake him. I want to get going. And then, uh, is it airborne hobs? No. Everywhere is different. Yeah, I don't know. I think it depends on the plane. Yeah. But um, yeah, so anyway, we took off. Um, doesn't climb as well with four people in. We oh. should be amazed now. <laughs> That's uh, a bit of a giveaway, yeah. isn't it? Try so, doing that in summer when it's hot. I know. Then- I, to be honest, I, would, I'd, I wouldn't have even probably attempted. Or no. I'd have double checked like all my takeoff. <laughs> or imagine if you were on runway 19. <laughs> I've never done it. I really want to do it. You've never done it. Really How want have to you gone away this long for never going on that runway? Honestly, before we carry on, I just want to say um, shout out to the motorist again for hosting us. How yes. are um, Definitely check it out if you haven't. It's a great place, great food, great Link. atmosphere, especially on the In- weekends. They do plenty of shows. Um, well, you'll know more than me. Yeah. You'll pop a car nut. Nice. <laughs> I'm just... But no, uh, it's great. Good family day out as well if you want to bring the family or... Oh yeah, well you can nip over to the to the air club. And yeah, definitely visit Sherman as well. Um, I can't I, forget the OGs. No, no, <laughs> shout out to Sherman. I mean, their their hangars are pretty cool. They've got some cool little aircraft. Don't get wrong. Sometimes you you can get little tours around them if nobody's busy. You can walk around them. Members can. No, I think you can. Really? I thought you had to. Yeah, but somebody has to be there to supervise. Otherwise, you're going around. I'll just take this uh, temperature probe. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. Yeah. Let me just take the PO, PO heat. I don't know. They just PO probe. Not, I mean, then again, obviously, they know me, but like every time I second a friend around or. Imagine you walk back in with a propeller. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to need it. Um, yeah. yeah they do, uh, sometimes they do offers on um, trial flights, so definitely check them out. Um, oh, geez. Yeah. Uh, this is the thing I. Uh, probably won't do too much flying now it's coming into winter because so you can't see outside but it's a the thing day. is the winter is the best time to go flying you either have the best days you, or the worst have, days when, especially when high pressure comes over clear skies you might have a temperature inversion but other than that it's a bit of fun that yeah but once you get past that it is beautiful yeah no I'm just, I think I just think with winter you either get the best weather when it's like let's say high pressure cold 
Uh, uh, clear uh, high sky, clear density. skies. Yeah. So good engine performance. Or you get absolutely naff weather like this morning when yeah. you've got fog, mm. um, drizzle, uh, it's <laughs> cold. It's one or the other. It's two extremes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, but um, yeah, I, the thing is I'm worried I might not get flying that this much this winter, so... I don't know. Don't, we'll don't be so negative, Jacob. <laughs> don't don't be don't. shit on our plans. I just don't. I just don't. <laughs> Look, if, hey, if we get to go, I, I want to try and do a few landaways. Listen, we've got we've got a few things planned. Let's not say what. Well, we might not maybe. go ahead yet. We need to see. Go ahead this year, maybe. Mm. Um, but maybe maybe the uh, trip to France that we can say. Yeah. Maybe that'll be going ahead. So I was watching a video. Because I'm going to ask you a question in a minute because I was thinking about it just while you went to the loop. What type of video? Um, <laughs> it was a Noel Phillips video. <laughs> I'm joking. Noel Phillips video, thank you very much. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> Go on. <laughs> dirty mind. Dirty, dirty. Anyway, um, yeah, I was watching a Noel Phillips video. One of his Vogue videos, you know, he takes his kid flying. Oh, I saw it. They went to um, the France. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think the title of the video was like it was like this is how easy it is to fly to France or something I can't remember but I was watching it I was like that's pretty because he flies from Gamson which is probably like 10-15 minutes in the air from us yeah if that pretty much pretty but like much. um yeah it looks super easy to fly over yeah they filed the flight plan for him as well Gamston mm. over they? the radio yeah, yeah yeah he just says oh can you fly um Gamson's activate, f- activate, sorry. Gamson's activate it. Fies, though, all right. To be fair, Doncaster will do it for you. Yeah, but Doncaster's closing. No, they won't close the, um, they won't close the service, though. Yeah. They can't do. Why? Because who's going to monitor the airspace around here? Nobody. It's just going to be like the York, the Vale of York. If anyone, it'd be Scampton. RAF Scampton. Nah. Somebody, there's no chance they're keeping that open. The um, ATC. What what airspace? Well, no, is I think no, I think they'll just hand it over to Nats. Oh no, Humberside, Nats. They don't get involved with uh, anything lower than. Well, you know, what I mean, ten thousand feet. I thought they hand hand it over to somebody. I don't Humber- know. Humberside, that's it. Yeah, but that's literally the only people left. So you have to trans, bro. That'd be boring. Flying yeah, fly, yeah, fly from Sherburn down the south. You'd... This this whole area is just going to become a massive playground. Yeah, I know. The opportunities. <laughs> yeah. To... It should be cool. But it, Honestly. It, so, tell um, you, we should get a jet. Well, we'll, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> I didn't even know it was a possibility until this morning. Um, <laughs> not that we're rich or anything. But um, that's what I was going to ask you. What are your top aviation, let's say content creators? Because obviously that includes Instagram, um, YouTube, um, podcasts. In, ter- in terms of like inspiration, which which I love to watch uh, and everything, um, I think one of the main ones, just because I loved the content that he was doing and, and just, he, he actually teaches quite a bit, was Trent Palmer. Out in the um, US. Yeah, he yeah. does a lot of stall stuff that's stuff's cool by the way uh, uh, that's a yeah. whole other story but that's he flies cool. a kit fox but that's really cool um and he was a big influence the other one was captain joe uh, yes when, when first when yeah. first learning and and everything he did teach a lot um seven four gear yeah yeah he, he's got to be probably one of, one of the best so two seven four seven pilots in a row <laughs> seven got seven four gears up there. I, I've I've literally gone from one one extreme to the other. Haven't I I? Um, top five. So you got three there. Dutch pilot girl. She teaches quite some really good stuff. Um, I obviously I'd, I'd, I've watched. I'd, 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 honestly, I'd love to get all of these on the podcast. Big big aspirations. Listen, mate, we're gonna do it. <laughs> we're gonna do it. So stay tuned. <laughs> like it's gonna happen. Like subscribe. Atom. I still don't know. What do you do on a podcast? Do you just follow or subscribe or what? Uh, click five stars. Follow. There's five. You rate. Yeah. You, you give ratings. We're such. I'm. You sound more boomerish than I do. I'm gonna have to go and rate my. You sound own like a right boomer. I'm like 24 in two days. <laughs> and you sound older than me right now. But yeah, like, subscribe, um, and most importantly, I think the most important thing is. Oh, were you not born before the millennium? 
Yep. <laughs> just, I'm winding you up. Cut it. <laughs> just, I'm off. Yeah, you, you, you edit this. You can just cut this out. <laughs> so, what, what you're going to find now is... Just, just going to split me, my voice breaking from the it, previous this podcast. This is it. The, 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 more he, the more he takes the piss out of me, the more chance or the higher likelihood that I'm going to make a, um, a voice a montage, break compilation. And it's just going to be him going, ha, ha, ha. For about two minutes straight. So I'll be careful, mate. Ooh. But um, yeah, um, most importantly, <laughs> you need to tell people about it. As they say in Peter Crouch podcast, if you've ever watched that, they say pass the pod. Yeah, no, definitely. Share it around. And you know, no, maybe, like maybe at one point we'll be giving away a headset, a Bose headset. If Bose, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit cringe. I might actually have to edit that out. If you're listening with your headset on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but well, yeah. I think we need to get a headset for this. So you said what? You said um, Trent Palmer, 7-4 gear, Captain Joe, Dutch pilot girl. You got one more. One more. Um, oh, God. Uh, so many. But from the beginning, they've always stuck. Um, probably that... Pilot Patrick, no, I'm joking. Pilot Patrick? <laughs> is, that, is that an actual thing? Yeah, have you never seen him? No. Right, never mind. <laughs> Why? <laughs> never mind. I want to know now. I don't think, I think is it he PG? Got, I don't even think he's a pilot anymore, apparently. Why, has he been booted? Well, booted a lot of people say, I, I ain't even seen him on Instagram or anything. But he used to be like one of the few that was big on Insta. But he didn't really show much piloting stuff apart from him just standing there in his uniform <laughs> and doing what he usually have his top off <laughs> yeah was he ripped I mean each their own was he ripped I think so yeah oh fairs then I thought he spent like a 40 year old kind of I mean is it fairs what I mean hey if you I mean if, yeah, yeah, if, if you yeah but they want much pilot content if you know what I mean if I'm not mistaken He's, what I he's mean, fair there. enough. At the end of the day, if you're, he's growing hey, if you've social got media and you've that. got a six pack, man, show it off. That's my motto in life. <laughs> There'll be someone showing a six pack, in, a six pack of Fosters. <laughs> a six pack's a six pack in whatever form it comes in. That's probably most. So come on, five, five. It's not um, Patrick Pilot. Mentor Pilot, he's, he's yeah, really... Yeah, true. He's, he's just done a good video with Tom Scott. Have you watched that one? Tom Scott? Yeah, so... Um, you know the guy who does like four minute videos where they're all like really well thought out and just random I don't know how to describe him oh I've never seen it he always wears a red t-shirt British guy kind of grey hair does like stuff like aviation or no no no, no, no. just D general terms yeah, yeah oh, but he does like random stuff like like a title of his would be like a theme park in a nuclear power plant and he'll just go and he'll like so well scripted like he's such a good reporter uh, presenter Watch him, honestly, sick. Because he did a video with Mentor Pilot where he, um, I think the title was "Can a Can a Normal Person Land the Seven Three Seven?" And he was at CAE in Dublin on one of the full motion sims. Um, and basically, what he, he was just sat in there. The plane was set to an autopilot setting of some sort, just fo just like following the um, FMC, whatever flight plan. And Mentor Pilot was in the back obviously able to communicate with him and he had to just walk him through first time round auto landing it. So obviously walked him through step by step out to land. Yeah, catching the glide slope. Yeah, the just setting everything so it would be, Yeah. And then second round time round was um, landing it, which was... Manual. Yeah, which is quite oh. funny. Um, but that was a great video. But yeah, Mantle Pilot's sick. Yeah. I love yeah. it. I think, I think that's a decent decent top five. Um, well, I don't think there's What about you? Definitely top, right? In terms of content that I can shoot. That was in no order, by the way, the ones I gave. <laughs> no specific order. <laughs> um, top five. In terms of ones that I can shoot, because when I was younger, right, I'll do my top five that I can shoot right now, which is um, 7 4 gear. It's probably top. That's what I probably consume the most. Yeah, he's, he's hilarious as well. Yeah. Um, my barber watches him. Seven four gear, <laughs> bro. He's just he's just cool as you like. like have you watched his twenty? Uh, he's something like a day in the life of a cargo pilot. Hasn't that just been released? Yeah, yeah I haven't watched it. I saw it, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't cool manage video. to watch it. He does like a twenty-one hour day. 
For, uh, when I say 21 sure, hour day. That's not illegal. No, but he's not, he's resting. Like, so basically, oh, 20, his get, 21 like, hour day starts from when he gets- Resting kind of period. He gets like called on duty and then until he gets into the hotel in his then destination. Because the flight's like 14, 15 hours. So obviously sick. he's resting for the majority of that flight. He's cargo pilot though, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, looks quite cool that. Yeah, um, yeah oh, so yeah. that's number one. Lou Dix Aviation. Oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot um, him. Oh, no. <laughs> lucky mate, I got him. Um, proper local lad, even though he lives out in Florida. No, he's, not, he's from Bolton. He's from Bolton. No, he's from Bolton. I'm not talking into <laughs> Mike. <laughs> Doncaster. <laughs> he's from Bolton. Um, yeah, Lou Dix. Um... There's another American one. When we go to America, we, I think we're gonna have to collab with him. Oh, he don't do flight training anymore. No, he's uh, he's moving to uh, flies ATRs. Yeah, he's a proper pilot now. We well, what he did before? I mean, he was always so, a proper yeah, no, pilot. So, <laughs> no, so he did the training. So, so he obviously was a, a CFI for a while. Then did his commercial training to fly for they call it Pink Flamingo, so it's like obviously regional down in Florida. Oh yeah. Then yeah, the pandemic yeah, hit. And they, I think he either got made redundant or they just put him off duty or whatever the, they did with him. I think it was furlough and then they just made him redundant. Yeah, basically. But then, so then he went back to flight training and then he's got gone back to working there because he's probably getting paid a hell of a lot more. Um, so there's that one. There's this one I've just had to Google because I've watched him so much, but I couldn't actually remember his name, but it's called SoCal Flying Monkey. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the best bit about him, right, yeah. is he just does cool videos, but... He flies his family everywhere, don't he? Yeah. For work and His plane is unreal. Yeah. Like he's kitted out and modded it um, to his own specs. But he's also a film producer. Um, okay, a film. What's it called? Cinem- a- cinematography. Aerial cinematography. No, no, no. no. He, just, oh. he's, uh, he, like, he works on Netflix films and stuff. What is he? Yeah, yeah. So he, he's unreal at editing. Like, as in for but, self. Machine. Yeah, yeah. But that's the same with uh, Trent Palmer. He owns a uh, aerial photography company. All oh, right. So aerial videography yeah, yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah, but like yeah. with drones and everything, so that's why he's sick. Um, so yeah, he's definitely in there because um, it's just a bit more sophisticated content. There's not like it's not like a clickbait title. He just like he said, he's like flying the family to California. <laughs> yeah, it's like really well did put you, video. Did you see the video from him that um, where he almost got caught in a thunderstorm over California? He had to divert. I'm sure it was possibly. Him. I just watched him. That was actually cycle. really like insightful. Yeah, he, but it, the thing it, is, he's very honest. Yeah, which is which is great because I think that's what. Oh, that's a nice car. Um, yeah, he's just a very honest guy, which is, which is what I like. Yeah, no. Um, I've got to give a shout out to the flying reporter. I think he's quite cool. He just, just oh, and then it has I don't to think be. I've seen him. Yeah, it's uh, he will have done. Maybe I'll he's recognize biggest, him when I see his face. But yeah, he's one of the biggest the... UK ones. No Phillips has to be in there. Watching oh, Phillips yeah, all yeah. the time. No, no, he does. He does. Um, and then quality. oh, who's? I think he's called Jeb Brooks. An American guy he does like travel. Uh, um, For some reason, that rings a bell. Yeah, he's an American vlogger, and he's he's not obviously revolved around aviation, but he does a lot of like um, plane versus train, where he'll fly from. He'll he'll start at say Pennsylvania Station in um, in New York, and he'll race to. What he'll do is he'll get a train to a destination, yeah, or a point somewhere else. And then what I'll do is I'll get the plane back and see how long, compare how long it takes him to get there to how long he gets back. The, Stuff like that's quite cool. The thing is, a bit of a side note, in America with trains, it's so messed up compared to Europe. But that's why it works. Because yeah, yeah. It's all, they're all owned by the freight companies. So yeah. the freight trains get priority over passenger trains. Anyway, I'm talking about trains on an aviation podcast. <laughs> you get Francis uh, Bourgeois on. <laughs> Bourgeois? Is that his name? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Bourgeois. Oh, I don't know. Hey, is it bourgeois? Or bourgeois? He's doing well for himself. He's got a TV show. He's got a TV show. He's got an endorsement by Gucci. That's sick. Obviously, he gets to meet everyone. Like Joe, he was like doing stuff with Joe Jonas. Yeah. Stuff like that. Obviously, it's part of his TV show. Just because he had a thing for trains. I might have to. I might have to. That's it. I was. I was at um, Manchester Airport the other That's week. Sick. Plane spotting, and the guys have got their own. The, the, you know the guys who film or like you know like the big live, jet TV the, like, the live feeds yeah, yeah they're well cool they just sit in like a little pod at the end in like a raised pod I swear they're at the other side of the viewing area of the runway probably I, I don't know like, the, the time because I was their, their angle is different 
Possibly, I don't know. I, only because when I went there, they were there. They were in the, the viewing park. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, but I, I've not watched their stream, but like uh, outside of that. You time. see, I get it sometimes when I'm scrolling through uh, like TikTok or Instagram. It's yeah. live. Mate, if, I think the average Joe loves playing spotting. It's just cool. Yeah, but they'll never admit it. No, of course they won't. <laughs> but it's cool. Like, no, There's no problems with nerding about <laughs> planes on them. Mate, look at when, I don't even know if it was pandemic times, but remember Storm Deborah or whatever came the other week? Eunice. I'd put, yeah, that was it. When, they were, when the big jet TV went absolutely Everybody, viral. Every man and the dog was talking about that. It was so Even like at work. Half, oh, did you see that, that? Half a million concurrent viewers when I was watching it. That's mental. Like the big streamers you get, like big, big streamers, like, um, I'm trying to think now. You know what I mean? Like FIFA streamers, quad yeah. streamers, like yeah. Tim the Salmon. They get like a couple hundred thousand. And really? they're big and streamers. That had, and Big Jet TV had 500,000. At least, yeah. It was just all like the UK. Everyone was talking about it. Oh, yeah. did you see the live stream and that? They were loving it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's cool, it's cool to see it in the mainstream. Speaking about Storms. Stormzy. Spe- no. Oh. <laughs> What? Shut up. You're getting way too big for your boots. <laughs> you can tell I'm a musician. <laughs> God. Do you not um, think I'd be a sick rapper? I, I'm, I'm having to look at this. Eh? Do you not think I'd be a sick rapper? Yeah. I reckon I could spit bars. You know, I wanted to DJ before uh, yeah, but you'd starting s- flying. You'd slay DJing. Wait, um, I have to get this up because I've got to get the... I've, I've written this down. You're like an old man though. You put your reading glasses Playing, on. Do you know Hurricane Ian? That uh, yeah. was in the US like two weeks ago, October. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there were planes that flew directly into the hurricane. Right. Right. Yeah. And I was like, well, they tell everyone to avoid hurricanes, don't they? When, yeah, you, yeah. when you're learning. Well, so I, I got to learn more about this, I thought. I got to read into this. Don't they say the front right? Front left. Yeah, yeah. So the front. Um, it's front right. The direction not... of travel is, is, is the. On the right, but at the back, is the. Most de- the deadliest area, that little quadrant. Yeah. Or if you're looking at a map, the, the front right. Yeah. yeah we'll go <laughs> trying on. to make that yeah, yeah, I'm trying to visualize it. Visualize so it. then our, they, they fly unique patterns through the hurricane and drop sensors at certain points. Oh, I've seen this. Every, every few yeah, hours yeah. to collect data about the storm. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've seen so this. So they go into the, in the, into the center, the eye of the storm. And if you... Honestly, I was watching a video and maybe we, for a clip of this, we can cut it and show of this, um, of this, this video. Making but, me work in the edit now. Uh, that'll do some, some reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and the turbulence. Oh, were, honestly, the yeah. people inside were getting thrown about and I thought, who, who are these people? Turns out. <laughs> it's John. <laughs> it's Instructor John. No, it's the 53rd Weather Reconnaissance Squadron also known by its nickname, the Hurricane Hunters That's of the cool. US Air Force. That's sick. Yeah. So they fly the Weather Bird C-130. I presume that's like a so steel reinforced Yeah, they've plane. got, I think they've got one or two of these planes. Surely it has to be like... And they fly into the, into the eye of the storm just recording these. And it's the only Department of Defense organization that's still flying into tropical storm and hurricanes. So they are literally storm chasers. That's cool. Imagine having that job. That is insane. Yeah, that is pretty cool. I, and I, plus, you gotta have some balls on I you. I think I've that. seen it before. I've seen it when um, you watch tornado chasers. I used to love. I want. And, I want it to be when I was a kid. Tornado. Oh, chasing. bro, I'm fascinated. I, I don't get me wrong. I bottle it as I get close to it. But it's just so cool many people die doing it. Yeah, oh yeah. But it's like them when they mod the cars, and I saw one where they were trying to launch projectiles up into the tornado. Um, so like some of them purposely tried to get in the path of the tornado yeah, yeah. and be able to launch it up so they could because no one knows really that much about tornadoes we know how it forms you know how quick it is in, inside yeah and that. how fast it moves but other than that we don't really know that was it 20 knots they move on average 30 miles an hour yeah something average, like that yeah. which isn't that fast but if you ever see a tornado standing still it's coming straight at you yeah that's the scary bit relative movement like, everyone's like oh yeah no no oh, it's getting bigger uh, and by the time you realise boom you're dead <laughs> um, <laughs> flying through the sky <laughs> yeah literally it's um, scary stuff but quite cool but that's well cool oh yeah but they say the, the speed the, the fastest speed in a hurricane is at the wall of the eye yeah yeah so you're flying in the middle which yeah it's calm but still you got, you've got to go insane. through the wall surely no I, I I'm assuming they go above and dip back down. Oh yeah, 
Mate, there's no way they're flying through through that. Like, they get ripped to shreds. It's pretty bottle jobby, that, if you ask me. <laughs> Hurricanes to call themselves hurricane hunters. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you do it in your piper. <laughs> Mate, I'll do it right now. Watch me. <laughs> Might never come back. Make a headline. <laughs> 24-year-old pilot. 23. 23. 23 year old pilot <laughs> flies PA 28 into Hurricane John. <laughs> Hurricane John. <laughs> Dies on impact. I, <laughs> I'm just saying. Sad times. No, that, that's. <laughs> God, you. It's deadly stuff, that. But cool, but risky they in life, are, I reckon. Uh, nutters. Cool nutters, but nutters. Just nutters. Right. Let's move on to. I wonder if the RF have, have something like that. Like it's probably not. Can you imagine the red tape they got to go through? Um, right, let's move on to a bit of news because have you seen this new um, electric flight aircraft? And I'm just trying to find the name of it now because it's got quite a, a funky name. Um, bear with. I've completely, completely lost it. Just talk, talk. Oh, here we go. No. Germany's EV... Uh, Avia Aero. No. Never heard of it? No. So. Is it new? Yeah, like it's not even in production yet. But. Yeah, but what what size aircraft do we talk? Obviously like a. Am I, well, I'll, sh- I'll show you a picture now. Obviously, I'm going to have to whack, whack one on screen. Oh. You must have seen it. No, I haven't seen it. Do you it. know what that looks really cool? It, I tell you what it looks like. It looks similar to the um, Piaggio. Have you ever seen that? Yeah, it's the one with the engine. It looks like a catfish. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is this is this has just got. Um, yeah, no. It has just got uh, accreditation from accreditation. Is that right? What's the yeah, sir. Yeah, from no, I think it's the I think it's the FAA. But anyway, but that's a massive step because um, it's it's probably it looks like a thirty seater kind of aircraft, so yeah. it'll probably use regionally. But because um, I know we were talking about it in a previous podcast. It was we? the last podcast, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Which if, if you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend it because we had some good points on there that we were talking about the future of aviation and what it what it held. Yeah. And what was in store, sorry. Yeah. Um but yeah, this this aircraft is gonna compete with that um the other one that we were talking about where Air Canada replaced an order. Because there's a lot yeah. of interest um from some major airlines which haven't been stated here. But it's, I know I've just I've been, from going over Twitter and stuff, you see it all over. This is the thing. I don't think it's necessary at the moment for stuff like that. Um, and there's, did you see the um, Elon Musk on Joe Rogan podcast talking about electric planes and explaining it in detail how they'd work for them to be effective? And it went into a lot of detail. Maybe we can go into more detail about this on the next podcast. Yeah. Um, or sometime in the future. But he breaks it down. But he one thing he does say it's not necessary at the moment for electric planes it's not needed currently electric cars or storing um, electricity remotely is necessary stuff like that but electric planes and I I kind of agree I'm not going to lie the thing is I think we're going through a phase so I think the last time I read up on something remotely on this this subject was that 1% 1% of global emissions were from air travel, right? Which seems like a lot. 1% of global emissions is from air travel. But if you see the amount of aircraft that's flying thing, about. When you break it down, when you break it down, there's something like there's a plane taking off and, or landing every three seconds. It's less than that, isn't it? Oh, probably, isn't yeah. that for like a that 737? Be, yeah, yeah, my 737. Yeah, so well, T- there you go. That says it all. For seven three seven is taking off London every three seconds. Yeah. Think about planes in the world, and it only they only emit one percent of emissions. Well, we'll put it this way. Uh, this this is surely a good argument. If you were to stop all air traffic, uh, air traffic, and then people who would travel by air in a even a A three eighty that carries about eight hundred people, and put them the distance destination that they're going to, but by either boat or car then look at how much of emissions are going up massively mm. from all the people who are traveling by air. Yeah. So in all fairness, people are, some people are arguing, oh, air travel is bad, it's this. 
But if they were to do it by car traveling or by boat, yeah, it's going to be mass massively th- more. The thing is with the, uh, and I've probably mentioned it, but there's no industry, maybe other than cars, but to be honest, I'd argue against that. There's no other industry which is working or striving to become more efficient than the aviation industry. I mean, you just look at the engines that come out five, six years ago where they've got the perforated edge. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, that reduces, that sick. and this is noise pollution, right? So yeah. I can't remember. The, they're all massively more efficient anyway, fuel wise. But noise efficiency, they're 20% uh, more noise efficient than you bog standard yeah. average Joe jet engine, yeah. which is in, if for perforated edge, all they've done is take metal off, essentially. It's just 20%. You know them scissors that cut patterns? Yeah, yeah. It literally <laughs> just put that round it. You've got Jeff in the metal yeah. manufacturing department. That, like guy from, that guy from Art Attack. John. <laughs> oh, wait, yeah. They're, do you know they reckon he's Banksy on a side note? I heard that. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> Mr. Art Attack. But yeah. Um, that was such a good show. <laughs> that's obviously like... Um, some of the technology that we don't even know about yet. Because end of the day, everything's oh, got to yeah. get certified, doesn't it? So Speaking about technology and advancements, oh. the B-21 radar. Radar. Not radar. Radar. As in like a Oakland Raiders. Bomber. Bombers, yeah. Oakland Raiders? Yeah, like... Are they a football team? Yeah, but Raiders, not radar. Oh, yeah, yeah, radar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Apparently, it's been unveiled by... Um, Northrop, Northrop Grumman. I think I've said that right. Yeah, say that again. Um, in the first week of December, unveiled at Palmdale, California. Oh, wait, I think I've seen it. How, how have you already seen it? It hasn't been released yet. <laughs> I swear I've seen someone on TikTok or like... Surely you haven't seen it. I'm having the old one, I don't know. Yeah. Right, I go with that. Unless it's like the Dark Star you've seen. Is that not from Star Wars? The Dark Star is the... Oh, uh, Death Star. Oh, God, this nah, is falling apart. Nah, I just falling, can't, can't really this, this is falling apart. Let's just move on. leads. <laughs> yes, they are falling apart. Again. <laughs> um, they built the B2 Spirit, so it was like the most um, stealth bomber in the world. Wait. Do you know what it looks like a bird, kind of? Yeah, is it more... Um, like the Peregrine Falcon. The, the shape it was designed. Yeah. yeah we'll so um, it's design uh, basically a mixed part of your typical plane like a tail section making it less detectable than even the stealthiest of fighters because fighter jets have to have a tail section. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Bombers don't. They don't have it. It's just like a single uh, wing. Oh, they call them uh, sing- oh, what do they call them? A flying wing design. Yes. But they call them wing body some of that yeah anyway but so apparently Flying, this, I don't know this B-21 Spirit, um, Raider it, it carries less than the B-2 Spirit by about 30,000 pounds of load yeah so like bombs but it's going to be a hell of a lot stealthier hell of a lot stealthier like it's cross section on a radar is going to be almost non-existent compared so I cool. think that's going to be a huge so th- that oh, technology wait, of course 30 years since the B, B2 Spirit's been out. 30 years they haven't brought something else out. It's thin like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that makes sense because the radar f- fires out yeah. that way. So the, the other, I think back before the B2 Spirit was around, they used to have, apart from the SR-71, they used to have the F-117 fighter. But... All these are going over my head. In military yeah. aircraft, I have absolutely no clue about. I, I I just got intrigued about it basically the other night. Yeah, no, I know. Exactly. <laughs> and I just thought that's so interesting because that technology will eventually come oh, seep in. into yeah. um, general aviation. Well, I guess it's like... Kind of general aviation, but For an analogy, commercial. it's like uh, Formula One, right? Formula One technology seeps into road cars. Especially with like Ferrari or stuff like that. Well, you said that. Do you know where, um, when it kept, went from hybrid, do you know when Formula One cars became hybrid? Mm-hmm. Mercedes were one of the first to advance so well. That's why Hamilton won because they got their hybrid information from the lorry department of Mercedes. Yeah, yeah it's crazy, isn't it? From I didn't hybrid, know that, but I mean, hybrid I'm technology. Not yeah, it's quite easy. Again, look, bit it's... of a side note. <laughs> no, no, it's with the, very topical with the American Grand Prix happening last night. Yeah. I missed it. Up the maxi boy. Oh, don't ruin it. Oh, don't ruin it. Um, 
Oh, Latifi. Latifi won. No, he didn't. Yeah. I don't believe that. Well, you'll have to find out. <laughs> you'll have to find yeah, out. actually. I don't know. No I'm just hey, I'm just trying to help myself here because you didn't want me to tell you the result. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just trying to like change subjects. Right. But it was a spin one, didn't it? Maz a spin. Um, <laughs> yeah, because we're, we're coming up to the uh, end of it, let's finish. End of the podcast, that is. <laughs> I nicked slash came up with my own podcast segment, which I've happily I named. I love the sound of this already. Airline concepts, true or false. So what I'm going to do Okay. Is um, I'm gonna. I think it's, I've got five, five concepts in terms of like a theme. It might be a theme. It might be um, just well, yeah, a theme. That's the best way to describe it. But some airline concepts, and you'll have to decide whether they were actually true or whether I've just made them up. And don't try base it on the wording because um, I've reworded everything so it's in my own kind of dis- if I'm not dyslexic but like kind of <laughs> really bad English descriptive a bit like the IASA exams once they get translated to English yes it's like <laughs> probably better than that okay so are you ready yeah go on right so number one the Etihad Formula One theme in celebration of the 2009 Abu Dhabi Formula One Grand Prix F1 and Etihad teamed up to provide F1 themed flights flying routes from the UK, Brussels and Spain. Upon boarding, every passenger was greeted by an F1 legend such as Damien Hirst, Felipe Massa or Jensen Button, who would then go and do an hour long talk about their careers and current affairs within the sport at the front at the front of the cabin. Um, then every passenger old enough was given a miniature bottle of the podium champagne used in the GP. And finally, F1's greatest moments was broadcast on the in-flight entertainment system. Now, what I want you to walk me through your thinking process. And you can ask me any questions, because I can go back. If, that, you if that's real, that concept, that's pretty cool. But the other thing is, on what? If it's, if it's Etihad, they don't really have aircraft which are single aisle. So they, they are, do. Do they? yeah. But what I'm thinking is, if, if he stood, if that F1 legend is stood at the front, how are the people all the way in the back going to see him? Or they're, yeah, they hear him over the PA system. But I'm trying to keep straight face here, like through them all. So you can't, you're not going to get anything from me. The little podium champagne bottle, that's pretty cool. Pretty good idea. I mean, getting flights to. You said, you said from F1 themed, so I'm guessing like where the tracks so, are. Livery. Yeah, yeah, but oh. in terms of flights... Is it oh, yeah, no, like, so they were just from, like, kind of, like, uh, from the UK to uh, Abu Dhabi, from Brussels to Abu Dhabi. So I'm guessing where these a track based, the country? Yeah, they were, it was marketed towards um, F1, uh, F1, where people watch F1, basically. I'm going to say that's cap. No, I don't believe that's... that's you don't? No. Correct. Yeah. False. Yeah, because imagine trying to get the logistics of getting like Felipe Massa and Jensen Button and, and David Coulthard on. I'm devastated. I thought that I'd have you then. Okay. Now that's too good to be true. <laughs> that's my brain. <laughs> right. Number two on numero dos in Spanish. For our Spanish audience. <laughs> yeah. Just fluent. And we got a pretty big Japanese audience. Japanese. Yeah. Look at the stats. Oh, possibly. I don't know. I'll have to look. Yeah, we've got like 12 million from Japan listening to the podcast. That's what it is. <laughs> 12 million. <Yeah. laughs> and, and you've got Varon from Pilot Network in Uzbekistan. That's the one. <laughs> yeah, that's the one person in, point in Uzbekistan. <laughs> <laughs> if you listen, Varon, I hope you're doing all right. Um, <laughs> right, number two. German nude airlines. So a German travel agency launched the world's first nude airline to transport the passengers in 2008 on a summer day trip from a German city of Erfurt to a famous Baltic Sea resort. However, passengers were supposed to be dressed while boarding and getting off from the flight. And not supposed to be. They were. But during mid-flight, they could take their clothes off and nude, nude out. What's the... Oh, so it's not... It's, it's not... So it's all the passengers can get nude? Yeah, but only mid-flight. Nah. 
Nah, nah, nah. I'm sorry. That that that's not that's not real. That's not true. Imagine it gets weird when someone takes the, get their feet out and put yeah, it on the chair. Someone's monkey, got yeah. monkey feet. Yeah. Imagine you've got somebody's. Somebody's got something way, else that's manky. Just you know, the- do you know the best thing about flying, right, is I've, I realised the way of the week, and this might sound weird, but you can actually fart on them and be pretty, like, inconspicuous about it. <laughs> I don't know, you just look, because you don't smell it. Tell me much. how you figured that out. <laughs> just exposing yourself to everyone. <laughs> uh, moving on, uh, is that true or false? <laughs> Quickly moving, that's false. That's false. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> You're joking. Get lost. Do you know what I thought I'd give it away as well? The, when I said the city of Erfurt. Er, er, Erfurt. I didn't hear you say that. You said uh, to a Baltic state Yeah, from resort. the city of Erfurt, Erfurt to a famous Baltic sea resort. Oh. Because I thought that'd give away. Cause that's when? When? 2008. Uh, is it still going? I'm going to say no. No, there's no way. Okay. There, okay. Did you say 2008? Yeah. Oh. Have you been listening? Maybe not. Genius. I was going to say, okay, back then, then, yeah, I guess so. It was more of a... More of, maybe. Right, so you have got one out of two so far. All right. That's some pretty good uh, odds. That's 50, not bad. 50%. Right. Number three. Hello Kitty themed flight. Yeah, it's true. Okay, you don't want to... You don't need to. You sure? It's in Japan, isn't it? <laughs> the theme runs through everything to do with your flight, starting with the check-in screens and your boarding pass. Nothing escapes the branding. So if you're not a fan of Hello Kitty, it's not it's best to steer clear. It only gets more kittified as time goes on. It's like either air is a secondary point to what is now simply Hello Kitty Hairline. Flight attendants greet you while dressed in pink Hello Kitty aprons, and your first sight on board is the sea of Hello Kitty <laughs> dress covers. Before you relax with your kitty pillow, <laughs> read your pink safety card instruction and watch the on-screen animations, which are bombardments of Kitsch, cuteness. This is definitely an issue. They love Hello Kitty. Well, it's either airlines. Oh, so it's Taiwan. No, it's not. I'm sure that's where they come from. Japan. No, I thought either airlines was Taiwan based. Evergreen group in it. (laughs) In it. I don't know. Anyway, (laughs) that's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Fair play. I told you. Fair play. Straight off the bat. Two out of three. Right. Number four. Captain's ticket. This is pretty good. Pan Am. Captain's ticket. Yeah. So, before 9-11, obviously, Pan Am used to offer what was referred to as the captain's ticket. It was issued by the airline to a select uh, to a select lucky few passengers a month who had won competitions in local newspapers of its main hubs. After check-in, the lucky passenger was greeted by the flight crew and walked through security and airside right to the door of the plane where a member of cabin crew would take over, seat them in the pilot jump seat, and provide pre-flight food and beverages whilst the other passengers boarded. Essentially speedy boarding. Yeah. Um, They were then able to experience the whole flight up top from takeoff to landing. It's pre-9-11 though. Sat in the pilots. Not in the actual... No, sat in the jump seat. Yeah, just in the jump seat, yeah. That, That must be true, actually. That's cool. That is cool. It's Pan Am, to be fair. No, nah, I'm going to say that's true. Well, no, you... no, I tell you why that is, that must be true. You ever watched um, Catch Me If You Can? No. You have to watch that. It's about um con artist. It's got anyway. um, Romeo. Um, Robert, uh, Robert. DiCaprio in it. DiCaprio. Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah. I was going to say Robert De Niro. No, I've, I've, seen, I've seen screenshots of it. It's a true story though, isn't it? Yeah, so that's so good. But he was jump seeing it and he got away with stuff like that. So I reckon the dude's so, even though it's not like scamming but yeah. jump seating I, I mean reckon. you are totally incorrect because it's false I just made that up last night oh <laughs> that sounds pretty good cool. <laughs> yeah no it did that's why I came up with it it's the fact that you said it pre 9-11 just threw me off I know I, I, yeah, that's that the first good. thing I was like yeah, I've good. got him um, quite impressed with myself here yeah. yeah. absolutely sold you on a first yeah, few yeah it's still 50-50 yeah, right. Last one. This will decide whether you uh, come up with a positive outcome or negative. Yeah. Um, Bikini Airlines is the title. In 2011, the Vietnamese low-cost airline Vietjet turned heads when they announced that some of its flights would be tended to by bikini-clad air hostesses or air hostess. The brainchild behind the idea was Vietnamese Nguyen Thi Phuong Tho. 
The idea took off, pardon the pun, with it soon turning the businesswoman into a billionaire. And that's still running? I don't know. I'm going to say no in today's climate. Obviously with it. I'm going to say that's true. On what basis? Because I feel like it's going to, if, if it's anywhere in the world, it's going to be successful. It's probably going to be Southeast Asia, stuff like that. Um, what did you to say? It's just the market that it's in. Yeah, to be fair. Like over here, I think there'd be more like, oh, well, I'm not actually saying that. They'd had a plane to bloody nudist camps in Germany. So so what is your answer? That's the question. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yes, you are correct. I... So two out of, uh, three out of five, which... No way, and that made her a billionaire. Apparently so. Mate, have you ever heard of that place in the Mile High Club? You can join the Mile High Club in Las Vegas... So two people, yeah, no, wait, wait, listen to where this is going. Is it in a skyscraper? In like a, T, no, 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 TBM. You get in a TBM, at the back of this plane, it's got a bed, double bed, two pilots at the front, they close the curtains, they fly for like 30 minutes or whatever, or however much you pay for, it's up to you. And you can officially say you've been in the My High Club and you come out with a, um, a certificate. Only in Vegas. Only in Vegas does that happen. That's, that's quite, mental, that's but quite... people do it. Of course it's Vegas. Yeah, I know, but... Mate, imagine if, if we started something like that here. Fortune. Do you reckon that'd kick off here? No. Hey, all publicity is good publicity. Remember that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so but I reckon it just wouldn't. It, it, right, and this is no disrespect to the Americans, but we're British. Yeah, I know. We, very, um, we're very serious people. Yeah, like not prude, but kind of when it comes to. We're just boring. No, hundred percent. I reckon British people, Europeans, have gone over and done that. Oh, yeah, but you're in Vegas, so it's allowed. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to get away with it. Well, you would be able to get away with it, but I'm not sure it'd take If you off. took off from, like, Blackpool. <laughs> Black Vegas? No, that's not what it is. Skeg, Ve- Skeg Vegas. Do you know what? So I'm from Halifax, right? <laughs> Don't and give me excuses. No, 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 so I'm from Halifax, and do you know what some people call it? Which? Blackpool? Halifax, Halifax. Oh, Halifax, no. Fax Vegas. It makes no sense. I've heard of Cass Vegas. Um, yeah, but that works. Ponte Carlo. <laughs> <laughs> Ponte Carlo. That, that yeah. is class. Yeah, yeah. That is actually brilliant. <laughs> that is actually unreal. I'm going to say that next time I play that, I'm going to be <laughs> Ponte Carlo. Insta. Are we all right? <laughs> That's unreal. But yeah, I was, I was, Halifax is a weird place. Weird, yeah, yeah. weird place. I think, uh, but no, that were a good little uh, segment. That I, I, I should hope so. It took me a while to put together. I enjoyed so. that. But no, um, I think we're, we're going to end it there. I hope you enjoyed the listen. Like we said, definitely share it with, with uh, your mum, your friends, your nan, and your dog. And your cat. <laughs> no, get, get the word out. Uh, uh, if you are interested in aviation and wanting to start flying, I definitely do your research. Listen to some previous podcasts. We've, we've given some information. I think some point soon in the future, we're, we're going to try and put out more information to help you guys sure. um, get more informed about where to start how to start and how how to go about it, especially with finances yeah. and everything and definitely check out the pilot network because they help out massively in terms of schools near you and yeah um, just remember to Sherman uh, Aero Club as well they're, they're yeah. great if you're in the York, Vale York area we are they're, they're class yeah absolutely class but yeah um, thanks for listening and um, we shall see you next time yeah thank you very much adios Au revoir. Alfie the Zen. Um, Cali Cali Nicta. Goodbye. (laughs) He's great, mate.